So the 2019 Royal Rumble live from Chase Field in Phoenix, Arizona happens this Sunday, the 2019 Royal Rumble. Christ. When you say the year and the event, those are the things I reflect back on. It makes me start to feel really, really old. The 2019 Royal Rumble. This will be the 32nd edition of the Royal Rumble pay-per-view. That's insane. And you know, for older school wrestling fans, when you think about the WWE and you think about big shows, using the old pay-per-view business model, WrestleMania was always the creme de la creme. Got the most interest, got the most attention, got by far the largest buy rate. The one that traditionally got the second biggest buy rate, though, was the Royal Rumble. Because it was your official kickoff of the road to WrestleMania. It was a chance to potentially see who's that next man up. The event itself was unique. Lots of different things at play. So, you know, while personal favorites of mine, I might rank Survivor Series higher when you go back into the older school days of WWF slash E. Royal Rumble is always kind of a special event, too. Even now, where I don't find myself incredibly interested or excited about the event itself, it's as much habit and nostalgia as it is anything else. So as I look to the 2019 Royal Rumble event, and specifically the men's Royal Rumble match, every year the conversation to me for that event revolves around one question. Who should or who will win the Royal Rumble match? And there are some years where the answer is obvious and it makes sense and it's good. There are years where it's obvious and it's very lame. There are years like 2016, you get a miracle on everything that is the Hunter, the Hearst, and the Helmsley. Praise God, oh God. And then you have those years that you don't really have an obvious one or the options that you have seem incredibly lame as, see, 2018, see, 2011. It's just, some years are hits and some years are misses, frankly, and that's gonna happen. But as I look ahead to this Royal Rumble show and that specific Royal Rumble match on Sunday, I'm just struggling to really find possible Royal Rumble match winners. That either A, makes sense, B, logically deserve to be in that spot, or C, potentially would interest me or excite me with the possibility of them getting a world title shot at WrestleMania. Those guys that fit into that category are way too far and few between. They just are. And to me, it's kind of like, it's a little bit of a booking conundrum, like what they've done here with Brock having the belt and... You know, are you going to have him retain through to WrestleMania, which you would think they would do? You wouldn't have somebody screw him at the Royal Rumble to get the strap off of him, so that would fit in Balor to fucking have it, could you? Oh, shudder to wonder, shudder to thought. But I look at some of these guys, like, who are the real possibilities here for guys that could win this year's Royal Rumble? I look at, like, Drew McIntyre, a guy who's being presented and packaged like he's a big deal. Like he's the chosen one of Vince McMahon that he was supposed to be almost a decade before. But now you're kind of here, and it's cool, and he's doing some good work, yes. But does he really feel like Royal Rumble winner material right now? Does he really feel like a guy that potentially either main events or headlines a WrestleMania in a world championship match? To me, either A, he doesn't, or B, if he does, it's a sad indictment yet again on the current state of the WWE product. I'm sorry, like Drew McIntyre winning the Rumble is kind of coolish, only in a nostalgia type of sense. Oh, we're validating the push that we derailed eight, nine damn years ago. A guy from 3MB is going on to WrestleMania to get a world title match. Maybe that's cool for a hot second. And then the appeal is quickly over to me. Who else are you going to do? You're going to have Braun Strowman? It really feels like that ship is sailed, not surprisingly so. The WWE didn't strike 
while the iron was hot, like the hell they should have, and they made a big mistake. Now you've got a stupid-ass character turn in there to kind of sort of flip them back, and now the momentum and the feeling is not the same. And if he goes on and he were to face a Brock Lesnar at a WrestleMania, it feels kind of anticlimactic, even if he would finally win the strap there. The timing and everything, the decision-making is just off. Not as off as, like, if you had Drew McIntyre winning, he, he's going to go face Brock Lesnar, or even worse, he's going to face Finn Balor. Just think about that for a second. Drew McIntyre versus Finn Balor being a world title match on your biggest show of the year. If that doesn't scream Bush League second-rate wrestling fed, I don't know what the fuck does. What else are you going to do? I mean, seriously, like, in terms of the guys that are on the active main roster, are you going to go the John Cena route and have him try challenge a AJ Styles or a Daniel Bryan at WrestleMania and try to get title number 17? Will the WWE finally go there where they know they've wanted to go for so long so that way they can finally cement in their minds and their minds alone once and for all that he is the greatest of all time? Like the thought of Cena, even though it would be breakfast club hijinks and shenanigans afoot, and I'm always down for that, Ultimately, Cena winning the Royal Rumble when he clearly doesn't give much of a fuck anymore. To see him go into a program with an AJ Styles or a Daniel Bryan culminating with a match at WrestleMania where he's going to be taking pot shots and doing dumb shit and acting like he doesn't give a fuck just so that way he could win a 17th world title has zero interest to me. I mean, where else do you go? I know, I think the betting odds right now are on Seth Rollins. And Seth Rollins, to me, he's like a B-plus player. He's not a scrub, but he's not a superstar. He's a safe guy. Likeable enough by enough fans, respected by enough fans, but he's not the guy that's going to truly stir the drink to move the needle for you significantly, to get more eyeballs in front of your product, put more asses in front of the seats. He's just not. You can like him, and that's perfectly fine. There are things that are likable about him. But... Like, to me, having him be the one to go on and potentially face a Lesnar at WrestleMania, okay, cool, maybe it's a respect thing. It wouldn't piss me off. It just, it doesn't move me and it doesn't excite me. And for somebody like me, who's looking for wrestling in general, and WWE specifically, to give me something to get excited about, to give me something to get behind, that just doesn't really do it for me. Not something I would rant and bitch about, like maybe some of the others I talk about, but not enough to move the needle and really excite me. Like when I look at it right now, honestly, I'm just being honest from my perspective, right or wrong. The most appealing options to me are a bunch of guys that aren't actively wrestling. And that's sad. Fuck, we could always go down the Batista path. I know we went down that path five years ago. How about we come back full circle and this time we bring back Batista with none of the Daniel Bryan elements fucking involved and have him go on and beat Brock Lesnar and live, give Batista one last run, the type of last run that he deserved, that he should have had five damn years ago. I'd be fine with that. Then you've got The Rock. And there will be discussion and talk about, will you have him come back, win the Royal Rumble, go on and get a world title match at WrestleMania? You know, it, it's like, to me, while on the one hand it's understandable from a business standpoint, short term, long term, it does further validate just how meaningless your current roster is, especially for a mid-40s rock that hasn't wrestled for you realistically in almost six years now, for him to come back and then he automatically wins the Royal Rumble. I'm good. It'd be kind of cool, and then the appeal of it would quickly wear off. The sad thing is, is the most interesting option that you have, in my opinion, my opinion, my opinion, to win the 2019 Royal Rumble would be Roman Reigns. And what a sad, twisted world we live in that that would be perhaps the best option. You've got Roman Reigns coming back from battling leukemia, giving it the cock fist of a lifetime! He's come back to take his rightful place at the top of WWE's hierarchy and pecking order. And he wins the Royal Rumble. He goes on to WrestleMania and he disposes of Brock Lesnar one more time. Like, there's a great inherent comeback story to that. 
would also be kind of interesting if Roman Reigns came back and he was like surprise entrant number 30. I have to imagine the roof is going to come off of the damn place. Because at least initially, it's going to be really hard to boo the dude that just battled fucking cancer. And if we got to the point where the Roman Reigns character hatred is so bad that we boo the dude coming back from beating cancer, then perhaps that is a really sad indictment on us as a community of wrestling fans. But even then, the appeal of that would quickly wear off because Roman Reigns has won the Royal Rumble yet again. He's getting another title match against Brock Lesnar at a big pay-per-view yet again. He's main eventing WrestleMania yet again. Ugh. It's sad when that feels like the best, most compelling, most intriguing way to go. And perhaps when I look at the 2019 Royal Rumble in general, I shouldn't have really high expectations for the Royal Rumble winner being something awesome, being something exciting. Because there's a very good chance that the women are going to be main eventing that show. So they might not throw too big of a winner or too big of a highlight in there and leave us all a little disappointed. It's sad, though, because I always looked at, like, what you got past the Survivor Series? There's a little bit of that lull for the next two months, and you're kind of recharging yourselves a little bit as a wrestling fan. You're getting ready for the Rumble, which means you're starting to get ready for WrestleMania season. And I really point to the Royal Rumble as the show to get me kick-started back into the flow of giving a fuck about wrestling again. And when I look at this Royal Rumble match on Sunday, on paper, it does absolutely nothing to do that for me.